My name is Rafi Rivero. I'm the creator of Unarmed and in my other life, a filmmaker. I feel a lot of pressure. There are a few days where it just feels like the world is pressing on my skin, like where it's just hard to breathe. To me, the problem has always been so obvious that there's racism and it's killing people and a lot of people just don't agree with you. And they say, no, it's got to be something else. And it's like, what else could it be at this point? You know, when I was a kid, it was like I was really good at baseball and soccer. And you'd watch TV and stuff like that. And you'd see the kids in the commercials. And are they talking about an all-American kid? And I just thought, like, who is more all-American than me? If they're talking about an all-American kid, they're talking about me. Like, I just knew that I was that guy. And at some point in my life, I realized that nobody else thought of me that way. And that nobody would ever think about me that way. It's, it's just really painful in, in that way. Each unarmed jersey has the name of the victim, whether it's Eric Garner or George Floyd, and it has their age as the jersey number. George Floyd was 46, so it's number 46. Eric Garner is 43. I did nothing. We sitting here the whole time. What our business? It's designed in the color of a local sports team. So Eric Garner is in Staten Island, New York. The closest sports team is the Staten Island Yankees, which is the minor league team, and they have the Yankee pen stripes, and so I designed the jersey with that. And then somewhere along the way, I was just thinking about how many times some of the people have been shot by the police. Eric Garner, of course, was choked, but when I first moved to New York, there was the Sean Bell incident in 2006, and he was shot 50 times by the cops on the night of his bachelor party. So there are 50 stars on that jersey. Breonna Taylor was in bed. The police busted into her home, shot her eight times. So there are eight stars on her jersey. So those are the main elements, just the color, the number, and the stars. Athletes occupy this interesting space because they're revered for what they can do in one area of their lives, and yet their whole personhood is often denied in the wider culture. One of the problems with black masculinity, at least as it's depicted in the media, is it's this hyper-masculinity. And part of it is because of sports and the way sports are marketed. They're these kind of black men that are infallible physical beings with perfect bodies. You can run and jump and do all this stuff. And that doesn't make room for us as emotional beings. I always love it when you're watching like the championship of some sport and they win the championship and all the guys are crying and it's the only time you see a black man cry. It's really tough every single time to design a new one. You, you want every jersey to be the last one and often what happens is the next week Something happens. I designed the George Floyd jersey. We printed them, presented them on the streets. It got a great response. And then I'm coming home and, and you see the Richard Brooks video on Twitter. I, I, I can't even revel in having brought my artwork onto the streets before I'm looking at another video looping as a GIF on my Twitter feed of a guy getting shot in the back because he took a nap in his car. It's 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 exhausting, man. I must tell you, I watched the shooting in particular in Tulsa. And that man was hands up. I mean, it, to me it looked like he did everything you're supposed to do. Shot fired. Ooh. 321, we have shots fired, we have one suspect down, I we need to, to insta here. I need to get this uh, eastbound closed down if they could, because they're not going to be able to let anybody. Okay. 
So many people have these balkanized lives. And, and you look on their Facebook profiles and all their friends are white. Or vice versa, all their friends are black. I don't know how you can live like that. In a weird way, the easiest way to start conquering racism is just to have some friends who are from a different race. You know, not that hard. I've been stopped and frisked by the police. I've been pulled over for no reason. I've been called the N-word. I've had any number of racist things that have happened in my life. Jobs I've been passed over for. So it's affected my life. It's a force in my life that is hurting me and it's held me back at times. Here's something that I can do that's about my own subjectivity, but about a thing that millions of people have a lot of grief and trauma about. I don't actually want to do this job. Like, uh, with George Floyd, it took me a whole like week and a half after he was killed, and I was sitting there like, oh, I don't want to do this again. No. You know, somebody, somebody else is going to protest. And I was looking one day at like, all the old jerseys I designed, and I include a photograph of each person. I was looking at all their pictures, and, and I felt like these people were just looking at me like, yo, you're not going to design a jersey for this man? I find that thing of someone will have a favorite player, but they won't have any black friends to be fascinating. And it felt like a great way to talk about this disconnect in social justice through this thing that we all love, which is sports. Hey everybody, uh, thank you so much for watching this project about Unarmed and about me. You know, when I first started this project, I had no idea that it would be something I'd be doing potentially for the rest of my life. It was a one-off thing, and then it became a two-off and a three-off, and seven years later, I'm still doing it. You can't imagine the amount of times that I've broken down in tears working on this project, but I feel compelled to keep doing it. One of the things about a 2D design and what you've seen, something that starts on social media is, well, that's cool. I've always wanted to make it into a three-dimensional thing, a physical garment that somebody could actually wear. And every time we post it, people ask, where can I buy these? Well, that'd be great if it was just a cool design, but we're talking about people's lives. We're talking about a gap in social justice, in racial equity in this country. And in order to make something like that, there's a whole other battery of things that need to be set up on the legal end. I need to have relationships with families and activists and social justice organizations. I need to feel right morally that I can actually go ahead and manufacture these things. So I'm working on that stuff every single day. And if you're interested, I'm working on that stuff every single day. And if you're interested in unarmed, Go to unarmed.co, sign up for the email list. I won't spam you. It's like me and two other guys who are doing everything. So go to unarmed.co, sign up. Thanks so much for watching. Hope to see you soon. Bye.